Hi, Tyle here at Inner Fidelity, and today we're going to talk about a very interesting and very complicated pair of headphones. This is the Sonoma Acoustics Model 1 uh, electrostatic headphone, and the companion electronics module uh, for the headphone to drive it. This system can only be bought as a pair. Uh, you can't use any other electrostatic headphones with the amplifier and you can't use these headphones with any electro other electrostatic amplifier. They're just not compatible. Uh, this system costs five thousand dollars and yeah that's a lot of money but boy there's a lot of stuff packed in here so let's get through this quickly. <clears throat> the headphones themselves are uh, quite comfortable, reasonably good looking. I wouldn't say they're particularly stylish, but they're they're certainly a, a reasonably good looking pair of headphones. Uh, the comfort is reasonable, although the headband is a little tight from the factory. Um, the headband itself is made of nylon 12, so this is a very, very, very durable material. And what I did was to grab the headphone like this and bend outwards Till you could begin to feel it deform. Nylon is a nice material because it's not brittle and it does tend to be able to deform some without any structural damage to it. Don't hold the headphones by the edges or the ends or the cups when you do this because you could cause mechanical interference in the mechanisms inside the headphone and that would uh, not be a good idea with a $5,000 pair of headphones. The ear pads are a uh, leather, um, Ethiopian uh, leather as is the headband the ear pads are replaceable they come off with a little tug and uh, give you a little view inside there and there you can see behind the protective cover the electrostatic uh, diaphragm <clears throat> um, uh, let's see uh, the cable that comes with it is um, a pretty nice cable. It's about two and a half meters long. Um, the uh, Sonoma folks uh, uh, cooperated with uh, straight wire, worked together with straight wire to make a cable for these headphones. Electrostatic headphones need a cable that is a low capacitance cable. And uh, it, as a result, um, this one is kind of stiff. I did get some kind of microphonic noise up the cable if you rub it and stuff like that. And uh, it's a little short, um, but uh, really can't be made too much longer without gaining too much capacitance for it to be workable. The, they, it does disconnect easily from the headphones themselves and has a very nice mating connector here. <clears throat> uh, the Energizer unit itself, the amplifier is fairly sleek and compact. It's got the connector for the headphones on the front and a switch to toggle between digital and analog inputs on the side, a volume control. And then on the rear panel, it has the switch to switch between low and high level analog inputs. Uh, high level accepts 2.1 volts RMS and low level accepts 0.8 uh, volts RMS. Um, you really don't want to exceed those voltages with this amplifier and I'll get to that in just a, a little bit but it's a little bit sensitive and then it also has a SPDIF uh, digital input connector and the USB connector for uh, DSD. Um, it does accept basically all uh, data rates and bit depths and and so on. I didn't have any problems getting any of my uh, files to play on it. Uh, then it has a power input switch and a power uh, on off control. Um, it also comes with a uh, specially designed USB cable. This again from straight wire and uh, designed to have as little interference as possible and to be able to pass uh, high res signals and the power supply is a universal uh, input uh, switching power supply it runs at 85 kilohertz has a very large uh, ferrite choke on it to reduce noise before it gets up to the amplifier and that's about it for that 
Um, other than to explain a little bit about the driver itself and then the electronics necessary to drive it, um, this is the internal driver. Pay no attention to all the wrinkles and you'll see why in a minute. I've taken this thing apart and virtually destroyed it. <clears throat> this is what the driver looks like. There are uh, in its cassette, what they call. Uh, this is the front side of the driver that has the electrostatic membrane on it, the diaphragm. Uh, when it's clamped into this cassette, uh, essentially each cell is its own emitter and they're all driven in parallel by the uh, potential on the surface. The bias voltage of 1300 volts is applied to the uh, film of the diaphragm as is the roughly 140 volt or something like that uh, analog drive signal. On the rear of the driver there is a uh, a stainless steel screen mesh and between the two is a spacer and now I'll take this thing apart and you'll see how badly I've destroyed it. <clears throat> this is what the driver looks like um, out of the cassette and um, I've also peeled apart the layers a little bit so you can see um, so this is the stainless steel screen mesh it's about uh, point 0.1 no point yes point 0.1 millimeters thick the spacer between the two which is this Formex foam piece is about 0.6 millimeters thick and the diaphragm is about 15 microns thick which is quite thin. Um, I will have to say that in the process of taking this apart there's all sorts of bits um, adhere to each other with adhesives and and I, I during the course of it and I've messed around with it a lot I wasn't I've never punched through this film it's still intact so this indeed does seem like a very very durable part. Um, the problem with this uh, driver is that there's a lot going on here, and this is a very novel uh, type of driver. It was only invented, uh, well, the initial idea less than 10 years ago, and then the full development more like four years ago, or you no, know, probably, well, four or five years ago. <clears throat> um, the problem with a driver like this, most electrostatic drivers have stators on both sides of the diaphragm with the diaphragm in the middle. And that allows the electrostatic force to be even as it moves back and forth. With a single sided driver like this, with the potential and the drive, with the bias and audio drive signal attached to the diaphragm and the uh, screen at ground, uh, so you have the diaphragm here and the screen here, when it moves closer, to the screen it will attract more because it's closer and then when it moves farther away the square loss differences will cause there to be less energy applied to the diaphragm and therefore as it moves back and forth it's not perfectly linear and you end up with a second usually even order distortions because uh, it's only it's affecting it on one side of the transfer function at any rate um, so uh, there are problems with harmonic distortion, particularly second harmonic distortion with this type of driver. Also, uh, you'll notice that all these uh, individually emitting cells are different sizes and shapes. Um, that is a little unusual for sure, um, uh, but it has the advantage of you don't have a signal, single resonant frequency driver. You have drivers that have a distribution of resonant frequencies that Sonoma claims kind of evens out the performance of the driver as a whole. At any rate, um, uh, they did a lot of finite element modeling on this uh, driver in order to be able to predict its behavior very well and then they developed digital signal processing filters in order to ensure that this driver is uh, to, to, to uh, attempt to linearize the driver by, with the electrical signal. So in the 
<coughs> amplifier itself, there is uh, a digital signal processing unit that applies all these various filters to uh, linearize the driver. And in fact, even when you put in uh, analog signals, they are digitized through an ADC, an analog to digital converter, before being sent off to the uh, uh, digital signal processor in here. <coughs> Uh, as a result, um, if you overdrive these inputs, you end up overdriving either the input of the ADC or, and, and as a consequence, you're sending inappropriate signals to the DSP and, and, it, and you can run into problems. I had some problems initially um, as I uh, overdrove these when I made measurements and I had to contact Warwick and, or contact Sonoma and figure out exactly what conditions I had to have to set this properly. Um, I suggest when you're using this unit, the best input to use is the USB input um, and then the other digital SPDF digital input because then you don't run into these problems of overdriving the analog to digital converters and you also bypass that one other step of, of signal uh, tomfoolery or whatever you want to call it with an ADC in order to create the digital signal. Um, also, the best way to drive this unit if you're going to use the analog inputs is to turn the volume all the way up and then attach it to a volume controllable source like the variable outputs of a preamplifier and that way the unit with its volume all the way up is always operating with its best resolution and you will tend not to overdrive it unless you're listening to really loud levels. Uh, what I found was that um, I think this driver um, has fairly limited surface area on each of these cells and it has a hard time with bass in particular and the large excursions of the diaphragm necessary for good bass response. Um, uh, and so even with the digital input and um, even with the volume not particularly all the way up, but certainly with the volume all the way up. If you're listening to electronic dance music and you hit that drop and you're listening at a solid level, you can pretty easily get distortion in the lows. So this is not a system for bass heads or people who listen to their music fairly loud because you'll run into these distortion problems. However, uh, if you listen to it at a, a normal listening level, and I would say it's between 85, 80 and 85 dB on average, I, I didn't run into this problem and I found it very nice sounding. Uh, and it's very nice sounding for uh, a very particular reason. Another job of the DSP inside the amplifier unit is that it does a equalization correction to hit a target response curve uh, for the headphones. This curve um, that they published is quite close. Well, the, the, the measurement produced that I measured, um, the raw measurements is quite close to the Harman target response curve. And what I found, uh, with the um, Sonoma Model 1s is that they have one of the most natural sounds of a headphone that I've heard. It's just very, very normal sounding. Um, so many headphones have problems with peaks in the treble or mushy bass or stuff like that. These headphones, they tend not to do that. If you're driving them within their limits, not loud and not too much bass, they have absolutely spectacular performance and their tonality is superb. Um, and dynamics are terrific. Um, the one thing I did here was a, kind of a little bit of haziness to the sound. They didn't have quite the nuanced resolve of a very, very good electrostatic headphone, say the, Sen the Stax SR009, uh, being well driven. <laughs> um, the, uh, so they're just a tad kind of hazy sounding in comparison. I really don't know whether to chalk that up to all the DSP going on or to the fact that there's multiple drivers in, in each earpiece. I'm, I'm not really sure. But I did uh, find that um, it didn't quite have that nuanced resolve of some of the other um, high-end electrostatic and even dynamic headphones. <clears throat> on the other hand, 
it has a sense of balance in terms of doing a, a lot of things right um, that very few headphones I've I've heard has, if any. I mean, it really um, it, it's it's just right sounding. Um, I would say there may be a little problem with imaging. The haziness makes it kind of not quite as specific and pinpoint in in precision. The image is wide enough, of uh, course, sort of average width, um, but has kind of a little less than average depth um, in the image. But but I'm doing a little nitpicking here. For the most part, it's just a, a wonderfully enjoyable listen. And um, I, I, I was drug into music and for music's sake way more often than I normally am. I'm, I'm pretty much a, uh, a curmudgeon when it comes to this kind of stuff. I've seen too many pieces of gear and I end up really not getting drug into things because I'm, I'm mostly listening, to, I mostly hear flaws and stuff like that. It's part of the nature of the beast of doing this kind of thing. But um, with these headphones, it was just very enjoyable. And so I got drug into music over and over again. So very, very nice listening experience. <clears throat> so I am putting them up on the wall of fame. I, I can't picture myself reviewing another electrostatic headphone without having these at hand. Uh, not because they would outperform them in, in, in any one particular area, but because they would likely outperform that, perform them on the whole. Uh, in terms of a, a lovely listening experience. Uh, one of the problems though is that uh, you pay your 5,000 bucks and you've got a system and you're done. Uh, headphone enthusiasts a lot of times like to play around buying different gear mixing and matching and that's part of the fun of doing this hobby. <clears throat> but if you're in the position where you just need a good rig you don't you want to get it and forget it and and just listen this is a, a great little system uh, especially for desktop computer USB listening I, I would absolutely encourage you to give that a listen if that suits your bill the amplifier doesn't have any outputs on it so you can't use it as a, a pre amplifier or for anything else it's really just for use as the electronics to drive the headphones so it, it has its limitations that way but again if you're just looking for for a system to plonk on your desk that, that rocks and you get a nice fat wallet, um, I would certainly recommend it. Uh, and uh, like I said, it'll be up on the Hall of Fame for, or Wall of Fame for comparison. I uh, guess uh, I guess I need to say that this uh, video review it really abbreviated a lot of information about this headphone. If you click on the link below the video, you can go you read the whole review, and there's there's lots lots more information about the development of the product, the the principles involved in the product, and what they did in the past. There's there's lots and lots of expertise and and uh, uh, experience that these guys have in high end audio and high resolution audio particularly and um, and so it's a again if you're interested I'd go read the article because there's lots of additional information there but for now I'll leave you with this I'll encourage you highly to get your ears on a pair of these because it's well worth the listen and uh, I'll see you next time